Uh, let me get the sound up here. Oh, how about that? I'm already at the right sound. Okay, I'm getting better at this. All right, uh, hey everybody, it's David Kramer, the Critical Thinking Christian, and today I want to talk about uh, three contradicting stories uh, surround, uh, concerning Jairus' daughter. Okay, uh, Jairus had a daughter, and the daughter was dead or possibly dying or on his way back she died which you know we we don't really have a clue what happened but uh these three different versions come from Matthew 19 18 not Matthew 9 verses 18 to 26 Mark 5 verses 21 to 43 and Luke 8 40 to 56 okay so we're going to start in Matthew. Okay. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Okay, and then this goes into the woman who was hemorrhaging. She touched his garment. He felt virtue go out of him. And uh, he said, Thy faith has made thee whole. Okay. 23. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the, ma give place, for the maiden is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof went abroad into all that land okay now we're going to have two prop we're going to have three differences here this is concerning the guy Jairus says his daughter is even now dead okay and there will be something else that's missing in here uh, because of the fact that she was already dead and here at the end there's going to be something I forget I forget which one it is but let's go down to Mark Okay, and when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh out of, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand hands upon her, that she may be healed, and sh she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. Then it goes through the woman with the hemorrhage and everything. Okay. Oh, let's see. That one there, they got all kinds of... Okay. Okay, so he heals the woman. And while he yet spake, there come forth from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. When he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumi, which is to being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Now here he commands, here you have a servant or someone from the uh, ruler's house, from Jairus' house, come and say, thy daughter's dead. Okay? In Matthew, the ruler came and said, my daughter's dead. In Mark, he says, my daughter is at the point of death. And then 
here in Matthew, he never said anything to the mother and father about just keep this quiet. And it says the fame thereof went abroad into all that land. And and the thing is, the people laughed at him and said, ha, 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 you're nuts. She's not sleeping. She's dead. So he puts them all out. And then, now you know people. There were people that probably were listening in the window and had their ear to the door and all that stuff. And somebody had to hear him say, arise. Okay. So they knew it. Okay. But he tells, he tells them, don't, don't tell them. Don't tell anybody. In Matthew, the fame went abroad. Okay. Then you have uh, Mark. And it came to pass. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was Mark. Yeah, you have Luke. And it came to pass, and when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come to his house. For he had only one daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Then, of course, you have the woman again. And while he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. Now wait a minute here. Yeah. Trouble is not the master. Okay. Now I know I lost my pay, I lost my place there. All right. And when he came, okay. And when he came, okay. The daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, "Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole." And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. And he said, "Weep not; she is not dead, but sleepeth." And they laughed him to scorn. Uh, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. So, once again, in Luke, and, and Mark and Luke, he charges them not to tell. Okay? And... You have uh, someone coming from the uh, Jairus house and telling them, hey, she's already dead. But in Matthew, who, Matthew just loves doing different stuff than everybody else. He likes copying and pasting prophecies. And I mean, he, he's amazing. But in Matthew, she's already dead. Okay. And doesn't say anything he doesn't even say anything here but when the people were put forth he went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose and then the fame went abroad he didn't say anything to the parents but in uh mark and luke you have uh the servant or whatever telling him that she's dead okay first uh Jairus says no she she's alive but she's near death then they have the servant saying she's dead. Okay, and then after he raises her from the dead, he tells the parents, don't say anything. So, you know, I think Matthew, I think Mark and Luke copied each other. One copied, copied the other. I mean, I, I thought it was, I don't know if it was Luke copying Mark or Mark copying Luke. So that's why they're, Right. Matthew, on the other hand, just goes his own way. So I just want to put this out here and say, you know, this is a this is supposed to be. Now, I did go over to Answers in Genesis. And uh, this was the only one that had uh, explanation. Uh, but once again, when you go over here, when you look at contradictions, these people don't say, well, this here is why it happened and that's why it happened. No. Right off the bat, 
Solution 1. Matthew didn't record the first statement of Jairus. Matthew may have simply omitted the initial statement of Jairus and instead focused on the second one, which he alone recorded. Well, okay. While he spake these things unto her, behold, a certain, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. I'd say that there was the initial statement. But what they're trying to do here in Answers in Genesis is go, they may have. And if you're a Christian, okay, and you like that spoon feeding, you're going, oh yeah, maybe, maybe that's what happened. Yeah. But, in Mark, He says, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands upon her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Okay, let's see. Where's, where's he, he telling Jesus that she's dead? Oh, man, let's, let's see. I, I might have missed this. Uh, I'm sorry if I did. I mean, I, I did work hard, 10 hours in a foundry. It was hot. It was humid today. It wasn't really hot, but it was humid. Okay, let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. While he yet spake, and now Jesus is speaking to the woman with the hemorrhage, oh, there came from the ruler's house certain which said thy daughters. Okay, so possibly the Jairus' servant was the one who said thy daughter is dead. So what's up, answers in Genesis? Well, I mean, come on now, these people get a lot of crap wrong, you know, they push the whole flood narrative, and this is a guy who has a giant ark down there, and uh, I forget what, what uh, state it is, but yeah, um, and, and yeah, it, it, uh, so it says, so chronologically, Jairus told Jesus his daughter was near death, and this was recorded in Mark and Luke. And then when he got word his daughter was dead, he told Jesus the second time and used a phrase that is recorded in Matthew. So when, when the servant came and told Jairus, while Jesus is standing there and hears this, Jairus still has to tell Jesus, uh, Jairus, the daughter's dead. Don't trouble Jesus. Jesus is like, huh? And Jairus is like, my daughter's, my daughter's dead. Okay. Uh, can, canned ham. That's what, canned ham. <laughs> yeah, uh. Solution two, different point of emphasis. The translation of the phrase just died in Matthew could also be translated. It may be translated. It could possibly be translated. We don't know for certain, but we're just going to make shit up. Near death. Yeah, uh, this, this is why I... I'm going to just say this. As I started looking into other, instead of walking around with blinders on and just reading the Bible as I was taught to read it and, and believing what I was taught to believe, and I took those blinders off, I am finding that the Jewish community, the atheist community, the agnostics, okay, and these people here, Atheists and agnostics are not going, yeah, we know for certain. Most of these go, we don't know. But this here, this kind of stuff doesn't make any sense at all. And if this here is an inerrant word of God, and God wants 
us to know what he wants us to know, what, what uh, we need to uh, get right with him, go to heaven, uh, live better lives, which it does tell you how to be a good person. But a lot of this crap, as I'm starting to read it critically, it's just, I'm like, this just, this is ridiculous. And then you go to websites, Christian websites, and they're, this is possible. That could be, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. That's what they're saying. We don't know. This could possibly be that. So why even write a damn article? So, th this is just another contradiction, okay? And like I said, from what I understand, um, I don't know who did what, but Mark and Luke kind of copy from each other. You know, they're like, uh, what are you writing there? Oh, okay, I'll write that down. So, when I look at Mark and Luke, I pretty much, you know, there, there are some differences, but I'm looking at essentially the same book. They should have called it MOOC. Uh, as for Matthew, like I said, Matthew is, uh, my gosh, I mean, copy and paste. That fits, this fits, that fits. So, there, there, there it is, folks. Another contradiction. Uh, I'm, more and more as I look at this Bible, I, I'm seeing more of a mythology and I'm seeing Christianity as a cult. Just one of many. And I was thinking about that today at work. The Christians will point at Catholics, they'll point at Mormons, they'll point at Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll point at any religion and they'll go, cult. When they got three fingers pointing back at them. All right? I mean, I don't know, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? <laughs> I don't know. But it, it, it's looking more like a made-up story. And I was watching a video from uh, this one woman, and she was saying it's more of, it seems like it's more of a control, okay? Control, manipulation, uh, stuff like that. So, and, and Christianity is good for that. I mean, all religions are, but being a Christian, yeah, guilt, uh, fear, all that good stuff. So, that that's it. I'm going to end this video now. You know, another contradiction. Uh, I'm going to keep studying. I'm going to keep looking. Maybe one of these days I'll see something that makes sense, and then I'll bring that out. But right now... From what I'm studying and from what I'm hearing from other uh, people and, and, and stuff, yeah, it doesn't look good. All right, so that'll be it for today. And until next time, I'm David Kramer, the Critical Thinking Christian.